please subscribe like and share good day good evening whatever part of the crazy world you're from welcome to ben alameda racing channel and thank you for uh, viewing and supporting my uh, my channel here that uh, maybe we can expand and get a better understanding uh, of how the combustion dynamics actually happens in an, in an internal combustion engine blah <laughs> anyway uh, let me start off with this comment many of you including myself in my younger years believe that most of the inducted column of air and fuel was pulled in to the combustion chamber by the action of the piston coming down from TDC and I would tell you most people would believe that but truth be told most of the intake column is ingested well let's get a little bit more on the technical side no suction of a soul you always heard me say that no vacuum atmospheric pressure when the piston goes down pushes into the intake port and into the combustion chamber the absence of pressure with the descending piston creates this cavity and the weight of the atmosphere pushes down on the venturi or the throttle body straight to the intake port and into the combustion chamber that is the correct uh, technical term no vacuum no suction it's a depression from uh, lack of pressure or absence of pressure and the weight of the atmosphere pushes down on the intake port that's one now that said many of us automotive especially believe that the piston solely is responsible for the inducted column from the intake port false most three to five times of the air and fuel mixture inducted into the combustion chamber we're not even talking about direct injection because a direct injection you're just pulling in air but most of this action is due to the overlap phase now we have a four stroke cycle as we believe the internal combustion engines is about intake compression ignition exhaust but the most important element out of this four is not even described it is the overlap it was only discovered by hot rodders in the 1950s or 1940s shortly after world war ii they realized that when they increased duration and intake and exhaust somehow these two intersect and both valves are open and that is overlap it's just happenstance that it happened as an accident with very very major uh, effects on power production without overlap you cannot make any horsepower why if you don't have any okay if we just put the, the piston solely responsible for the intake pulled into the or pushed into the into the combustion chamber or cylinders think about this when the piston comes up and then starts to come down then you open the intake valve guess what happens the air column is sitting there dormant stationary by the time the piston comes down there's always a lag time between reaction given that you've set up a, a condition of piston coming down and basically when the intake valve opens up as soon as the piston starts to come down it's too late by the time you get to the most advantageous crank the rod angle to where the piston speeds up and ingests that there's lag time and everything and when you have the lag time you're not going to fill that cylinder a hundred percent now if you look at when you have a cutout of an actual running engine when the piston comes up okay on the exhaust cycle it's chasing the exhaust valve once it's chasing the exhaust valve before it even gets a TDC the intake valve start to open already if you think about it the high speed exhaust column that went downstream to the primary pipes creates an absence of pressure or a negative pressure right behind it 
with the rapidly ascending piston with chasing the exhaust valve and then the intake valve opens up and then it sees this depression on the exhaust side and now the intake valve port and valve is open it yanks that column of air and fuel into the cylinders that's the majority of the pulling now when it does this you got to realize that the intake column is actually uh, anticipating with the overlap to get it moving because at that point in time the piston is still at a TDC it's below TDC and it's already pulling and you hope that this, this column goes under the exhaust valve and tumbles in okay or swirls into the chamber and captures it but somehow some of these gases end up going out to the exhaust port as a matter of it's a natural occurrence it come in it has it, it has a, a momentum and somehow somehow the some of this air and column air and fuel column gets extracted to the exhaust it's just a uh, necessary evil now if you think about the situation at hand without the overlap well let me back up if the piston is going up and the intake valve opens don't you think as a matter of consequence that now the piston is rapidly going up chasing the exhaust valve right your overlap and the intake starts to open don't you think that the intake air column instead of going inside the chamber gets pushed out by the piston and go back up to the to the throttle body or the venturi that's exactly the scenario without overlap but since we have the overlaps strong signal and depression coming out from the ex exiting exhaust gases open up the intake valve it sees this it just yanked into the combustion chamber we're not even talking about the port recovery part of the well in one of my videos I talk about port recovery so when the intake valve closes and so the air column is, is the valve is open the air column comes in and then the intake valve closes it it hits the the face of the valve and starts stacking up that's pressure recovery how much it stacks up and recovers and this this column comes up and it comes back down and the next intake event opens up it shoves it into the combustion chamber now with the help of the overlap there is a strong signal between the stacked up recovered air column charge on top of the closed intake valve and now with the highly depleted exhaust column behind the exhaust valve showing a lot of uh, negative pressure it has a big pull more than that what piston is capable of doing the majority maybe what I feel that on a two valve head conventional V8 config you know uh, wedge style head or a canted valve you're probably looking at three to four times now when you have a four valve head like this exotic uh, um, cylinder heads from the Japanese or or European and the coyote forwards and stuff uh, you could pull as much of the air column into the cylinder up to five times as strong because of the four valves inherent advantage at low lift flow it has a lot of open curtain or open window with the two valve, two intake valves that it pulls it in very very effectively so when somebody tells you that oh most of the intake charge is pulled by the piston before it goes up on compression that is totally false it is actually the overlap phase of the whole four stroke cycle or actually five cycles without overlap you have a tractor engine now another situation is there are people out there that believe between long rod and short rod uh where is my thing here i have a crower rod and an aftermarket i-beam here on my left these two rods you can see the difference okay the i-beam especially the crower is light almost as light as an aluminum rod with the strength 
and the consistency you hardly have any rod stretch with a steel rod now this too what you're going to realize is that in a lot of uh, sprint car applications or road race applications guys prefer a shorter rod especially if you got a tight track the difference there with a short rod is the piston hits tdc and descends down at a faster clip than one with a long rod basically with port recovery and the overlap pull when the intake valve opens up and a short rod descending quite fast gets a real good pull on the intake switcher additional pull besides the overlap pull this additional pull gives you the response so in essence a short rod, en short rod engine will respond out of a corner and let's say you get a, a half mile I mean uh, you know quarter eighth mile or quarter mile oval a lot of those in, in, in the east coast or even here you know short track oval track or road race short rod will give you that response because the short rod after the overlap pull will get hold of the intake mixture and give it this last gasp if that's what we call it of inhaled um, mixture now the long rod be it 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 dwells at tdc and sits there a little bit and slowly come out of tdc that gives you a lot of advantage at high rpm it's holding that mixture tighter and it's less detonate it's more detonation resistant because it keeps the quench at a tighter position while the gases are expanding or as with a short rod when the piston comes down almost instant almost immediately it uncovers the quench and now the air column sees this wide opening and it goes from a burn to an explosion that's a negative of a short rod but it is a lot more responsive so when you have let's say both three inch stroke or three and a half inch stroke on a road racing engine sure short rod will be quicker off the line quicker off the corner now if you're talking drag racing higher it, it launches and then stays up at high rpm long rod sure okay and just the fact that it holds that quench tighter is a is a very good benefit of that design so this one said now you, you have a pretty good you know uh, understanding of the dynamics of this too same thing with short stroke to long stroke the short tro stroke will pull on the piston faster from tdc than you would a long stroke after that of course you have piston speed that's why high rpm you have the constant motion of a short stroke up and down whereas a long stroke does this dwells at tdc this starts to accelerate kind of a little bit late in the cycle all right so uh, a lot a lot of uh, engines cannot take it well when somebody tells you they put a short run into their engine combination they didn't see anything even off a corner or whatever because their their cell in their head is incapable or is not superior in in the low lift flow uh, arena where they don't quite flow very good at the lower valve lifts where if your head flows good at low and mid lifts and a quick descending piston pulls out real strong it'll adjust that and you make more power but if the the long rod is slow and then your head is even slower flowing in the low lift you get a very soft bottom end and mid-range so think about those two short rod with a good flowing low lift number or low lift flow on the heads you got a pretty good combination that's why when you look at some of these uh, coyotes or four valve engine combination with a short rod oh man quick very quick off a corner now what a lot of the new ma manufacturers are doing today they put a lot of lo a long rod combination on their engine uh, that they're producing coyotes ls a fairly long, long rod compared to the old 1960s 1970s 1980s technology today they have a long rod 
So you tell me, why did they do that? They have one thing going their way. That VTEC, that variable timing. They advance the camshaft, okay? When it advance the camshaft, it opens early and closes uh, early as well. When that happens, your dynamic compression is, is up and there's your response. And then at high RPM, they kind of retard it or sometimes they have a different lobe and increases the valve lift and pick up a lot more airflow with an added lift from the VTEC. But some of these guys, they're advancing the exhaust and some of these turbocharged engines, only the exhaust is, is advancing or retarding to give it an extra boost. Because irrespective of, what, of the cam intake position, if it's, let's say, a 4V head, 108 center line is perfect for it. They just vary the uh, exhaust valve timing or exhaust cam timing to further pressurize the turbo and give it a lot more initial boost or less turbo lag. So on a turbocharged engine, exhaust valve or uh, opening is critical especially with the valve timing and, and if you advance the, the exhaust timing you know it, it affects the turbocharger performance big time now when they have intake and exhaust then you can play with the lobe center it depends what kind of factor which manufacturer does what with their engine combination but with today's new technology they run a long rod combination plus variable timing then you got something that's very good because the intake lobe or intake cam is very sensitive to the power range of the engine the exhaust doesn't really affect it you can vary the exhaust center line whichever way several degrees from ideal let's say 110 or whatever it'll be fine you hardly would feel it because remember the exhaust is under pressure but the intake on an na it's basically relying on nature to fill the cylinder with some mechanical enhancements okay and if that cam is faced correctly and then you open the valve at the same or at the uh, uh, ideal moment you're going to ingest a lot of uh, of uh, your air and fuel mix and then you close it at an early stage okay at low rpm you close it the exhaust valve early your dynamic compression boosts up on high rpm you retard the intake timing and hang the intake valve a little bit longer to bring in more air because remember at high rpm you have less time to ingest just like i said at the start of this video you open the intake valve earlier and use the overlap to pull the air fuel mix on a VTEC, you open the the intake valve, or you open the exhaust. I mean the intake valve. Man, I was oh, this thing's bothering me. There. But anyway, excuse me. You open the intake valve, okay, and um, close it late. When you hang the intake valve longer, you're getting in more air and fuel mix at high RPM because time gets just got short. So now when you hang it open, you're ingesting more air. And the same thing with some of the VTEC combination. You have a center lobe like on the Hondas where it runs on the two lobes running the two uh, valves. The center one locks the shaft and now you're running on the bigger lobe lift on the center cam lobe. And it's all for good. Four Vs are not known for torque because they hardly have any swirl. They only have tumble. Now, the intake, when you look at the approach, like the, some of these Toyota 4Vs, the approach angle, this is the head here. The port is really a high port, a high angle. They come in and they tumble, but it's at a minimum. Now, the Honda comes in more towards the deck, low port come in, and they do more of a 90 degree or more tumble into the combustion chamber and what that does it has an um, enhanced mixing so definitely the toyota might have potentially speaking better high rpm power 
but it has less mixture motion because it has it doesn't have much of an angled entry to promote swirl or an effective swirl whereas the Honda is lower a low port approach angle comes in and does more like a somersault and, and it has an enhanced mixing capability so you know for a fact that when when you have a container of fuel when this is compression you hit it it blasts all the the fuel and air molecules spread out and when you light it up boom it goes but now the harder the hit is the higher the compression so like a big bat or a big slap boom 16 to 1 boom 8 to 1 okay it does not create a uh, uh, mixture motion that disperses all the air and fuel molecules but now when you have tumble coming in right and you have this inside the cylinder and then you combine that with a little offset to the side intake angle off to the side so you have this swirl and then the approach angle of tumble and then you have adequate compression blam you have a very nice kick or a very nice uh, combustion response if you're lacking each and every one of those or one of those uh, mixture motions uh, the response is going to be a little softer now with a four valve being intake and then straight to the exhaust you have it has a tendency to get reversion negative reversion effects and I'll excuse me talk about that on one of these videos again so anyway so here we are I hope this is clear you know uh, like I said again let me repeat the air and air and fuel column gets ingested the most three to five times more than what the piston is capable of doing if you have to rely on the piston without the overlap cycle you have a tractor engine if you guys want to race each other with a you know your your tractor fine go ahead right you're not gonna make no rp you can have all the rpm in the world all you're gonna do is is cycle in uh nothing it's not gonna fill the cylinder so you have to anticipate the air column by opening it earlier than usual please like subscribe and share ben alameda and uh hey next one i'm gonna talk about headers and what's its effect and some of the tricks that we can do to further enhance your your engine but i just gotta get the header types that i i have to borrow some of these things because uh there's a difference in like tri y and a nascar tri y big difference the dog tarly tri y go oh that's it it doesn't make as much money well it has more low and mid-range and i'll explain why as opposed to a four into one and a nascar tri y where it's still got a long primary and they mix somewhere downstream and i'll try to explain that anyway there's a quick take hope you guys enjoy it keep in touch please subscribe thank you very much guys take care